Sometimes it is easier to use a derivative to approximate the value of an equation or a function than it is to actually calculate the exact value. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. The question's going to be, how do we approximate a function at a point. And to set this up, we're going to start by asking the why it works, or what's going on in the background, the why behind what we call linear approximation. To set this up, we're going to recall the equation of a tangent line. to the function f of x at the point a is y equals the y-coordinate, which is just f of a, plus the slope of the tangent line at a, which is f prime of a, times x minus the point, which is a. And what we also know is that close to the point, close to a, it is close to f of a. In other words, here's what I mean. Let's say I've got this curve here. And there's this point on the curve that we're going to call a. And we calculate this tangent line at a. And if I look at a value that is close to a, it's also going to be close to the point of the line. It's also going to be a very similar height. It's going to be close to f of a. It's off by a little bit. But that line can give us a really good estimation of what's happening close to the point a as it curves away from a. And the fact of the matter is lines are easier than curves to calculate points. And so we're going to prefer to use that blue line that gets us close to a to calculate what's actually happening close to a. Maybe this will look better with a more concrete example. Let's take a look at example. Let's say we were trying to calculate the square root of 25.1 by hand. That would be very, very difficult, because it doesn't have a perfect square root. We know it's close to 5, because the square root of 25 is 5. And that's the fact that we're going to use in order to estimate it. We know that the square root of 25.1 is close to the square root of 25. So we can consider. Let's say the function f of x is equal to the square root of x, or as we like to have it in calculus, x to the 1 half. Then f prime of x, the derivative, is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 square root of x. We need to know what f of 25, the easy point, and f prime of 25 is in order to estimate the not so easy point of the square root of 25.1.
Well, f of 25 is the square root of 25, which we know is 5. And f prime of 25 is 1 over 2 times the square root of 25, or 1 over 2 times 5, 1 tenth. So if we want the linear approximation, of the square root of x at 25, that's just the equation of our tangent line. The y-coordinate of 5 plus the slope, which is the derivative, 1 tenth, times x minus the x-coordinate, which is 25. We can use this linear equation to estimate the square root of numbers very close to 25. So we can estimate the square root of 25.1 by using x is equal to 25.1 in this equation. So the linearization at 25.1 is equal to 5 plus 1 tenth times 25.1 minus 25. And if we plug that into our calculator, we will get that the answer is approximately 5.01. And so we're estimating that the square root of 25.1 is about 5.01. So I know what you're thinking. How good is that estimate? Well, let's actually find it on the calculator. We did it by hand. We're going to compare with the square root of 25.1 on our calculator. So on my calculator, I will do the square root of 25.1. And we get 5.00999. That's pretty darn close, 5.00999. It is quite close to our estimated value that we found by hand. And doing it by hand with the square root would have been a real big pain because curves are difficult to calculate. But lines are much easier to work with. And so that's this idea of linear approximation, is we're going to estimate by finding the equation of the tangent line to see what's happening really close. So let's try some examples. Let's see if we can get good at this. First example, we're going to estimate 1 over 3.1 squared. Well, the function that we seem to be working with is we're doing 1 over x squared, or x to the negative 2. And then we can make the x equal to 3. So f prime, the derivative of that is negative 2 x to the negative 3, or negative 2 over x cubed. Three point one is close to three. So we're going to find f of three and f prime of three, and then we'll see what's happening close to that. So f of three is equal to one over three squared, which we know is one ninth. F prime of three is negative two over three cubed, which is negative two over twenty seven. So let's set up our linear approximation. Is equal to the y-coordinate of 1 9th plus the slope, which is negative 2 over 27 times x minus the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is 3. We can use this to estimate 1 over x squared near the point 3. We're particularly interested 
in 3.1. So 1 ninth minus 2 over 27 times 3.1 minus 3. And if I plug 3.1 into that, into my calculator, we get 0 0.1037. So let's check it on the calculator. What is 1 over 3.1 squared? 1 divided by 3.1 squared. Let's see how close we got. It's 0. 0.1041. And as you can see, that is quite close. We're only off by about 0. 0.0004. Not too bad of an estimate. Doing it by hand was much nicer than doing 3.1 squared, getting in something with two decimal points, and then doing that long division. Much nicer. This even works with trigonometry. Let's do a trig example. Let's estimate the tangent of 44 degrees. Well, let's change that to radians first. Um, we see that's close to 45. So we're really working with the tangent of 45 degrees. And if you remember your unit circle, 45 degrees is pi over 4. So we're looking at the tangent of pi over 4 to estimate our point. So f of x is the tangent of a value, tangent of any point. We're going to find that point. f prime, we know, is the secant squared of x. We're specifically interested in pi over 2. So f of pi over 2 is equal to the tangent. I'm sorry, not pi over 2, pi over 4. The tangent of pi over 4, we should remember, is equal to 1. And f prime of pi over 4 is the secant squared of pi over 4. If it helps to remember, secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is the x-coordinate root 2 over 2. The reciprocal of that is going to be, actually, I'll write down what I'm talking about here at the top. So it's 1 over the cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2 over 2, which is the reciprocal of that 2 over the square root of 2. And if I rationalize, we get 2 root 2 over 2, which is equal to just the square root of 2. So square root of 2 is the secant, but that's squared. So it's actually equal. Square root of 2 squared is just 2. Remembering your trig from secant, how does that work? Secant of pi over 4 is equal to 2. All right, let's make our linearization equation then. L of x is equal to the y-coordinate of 1 plus the slope of 2 times x minus the x-coordinate, which is pi over 4. But we want the linearization of 44 degrees which we have to change that 44 degrees into radians. 44 degrees. Remember, we multiply that by pi over 180. So we have 44 pi over 180 radians. There's no reason to reduce because we're going to use our calculator. So we're doing the linearization of 44 pi over 180.
is equal to 1 plus 2 times 44 pi over 180 minus pi over 4. Plugging that mess into our calculator, we get 0 0.9651. So that's our estimate. Let's check it with the actual value of the tangent of 44 degrees. And since our calculator is probably in radian mode, let's do the 44 pi over 180. Verify that my mode is in radians. Yes. So we've got the tangent of 44 pi divided by 180. And it equals 0 0.9657. 0.9657. And look how close the actual value was. It was only off by 0 0.0006, only a 20th of a percent. So we have this idea that we can get close to any curve using a tangent line. And so if I move a little bit to the right, or if I move a little bit to the left, I can see what's happening uh, kind of near that point. But it kind of begs this question, how much are we off by? How much are we changing by? This kind of leads into this concept of what we call differentials. How much are we off by? As x changes, how much does y change in relationship to x? Is there a relationship there? A differential is really just the amount a function changes. As a result of a small change, I'm going to move this up. as a result of a small change in x. Not the amount, the amount. The amount of function changes as a result of a small change in x. So we know that dy dx is equal to the derivative of the function. dy, though, is representing a change in y, a small change in y. And dx is representing a small change in x. It's the change in y with respect to x. What's happening? How are things changing really close to that point? So if we want to know how much the y's are changing, if we multiply both sides by dx, Then we get that dy is equal to f prime of x dx. And this formula is the formula for a differential. It tells us for every small change in y, it's equal to the derivative of the function times the small change in x. So if I was asked to find the differential equation, of y equals 4x squared minus secant x, first we can take the derivative, which is dy dx equals 8x minus secant x tangent x. And then multiply both sides by the dx so that we can see what a small change in y does. It's equal to whatever 8x minus secant x tangent x dx equals. So now if I know the amount of that small change in x, I could plug that into this equation and estimate how y is changing for a given small change in x. In fact, let's do an example equation where we do just that. Let's find the differential at 
and evaluate when x is equal to 0 and the small change in x, dx, is equal to 0 0.2. And let's do the function y equals 5x minus 3 over 2x plus 1. What we're asking for is at the point 0 on this function, if the x changes a little bit, if the x changes by 0.2, how much would we expect the y to change by? What's the little bit y changes by? Well, for this one, it's going to be quite a dramatic change because of its structure. First, we have to find the derivative, dy dx. And we know the derivative of a fraction is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top. And so that gives us 5 times 2x plus 1 minus 2 times 5x minus 3 all over the bottom squared, the 2x plus 1 squared. Let's uh, clean that up a little bit. 5 times 2, let's distribute, is 10x plus 5 minus distributing the negative 2 through 10x plus 6 over 2x plus 1 squared. And that's nice because the 10x is subtract out to 0. So we're left with 11 over 2x plus 1 squared. To get the differential, we just multiply both sides by the dx. And we find out that the differential in y, the change in y, the difference in y, is equal to 11 over 2x plus 1 squared dx. Now we're asked to evaluate it. Evaluate what the change in y is when x is 0 and the change in x is 0.2. Well, we'll estimate that as 11 over 2 times x, which is 0, plus 1 squared, times the differential times the 0.2, which comes out to be 11 times 0.2 over 1, which is 2.2. So at the point 0, when x changes 0.2, we're going to expect the y to change by about 2.2. And that's how we can find that differential and see kind of that estimated change at the point. So the big thing for today, though, is linearization to estimate a point. And we also took a little bit of a look at differentials. Take a look at those, practice a few, and we will see you in class.